uh, exercise that's from Avatar, um, the psycho spiritual path that I mentioned before. Essentially, mm -hmm. it says it's about getting a person, you, you go through five steps, and essentially you're saying, uh, giving a statement like, um, I'm a person who, um, like other people, deserve love and forgiveness. And so you're got kind of going through these different steps, acknowledging that you and your brother are both worthy and are both struggling with the same kinds of things. And mm -hmm. it, it's a real intent, put, putting intention on um, the desire to heal and the desire to forgive and the desire to accept both the other person and yourself. And so it, people are asked to call to mind somebody. Sometimes people would choose a difficult person, somebody that they're really angry with, or sometimes right. it's just somebody that's irritating them. And I think that's kind of a, almost a nicer place to start is just somebody that's kind of under your skin and then sort of go through a series of steps to help um, sort of remember the truth about who that person is. Because a lot of times that person that you think was so egregiously rude to you at the supermarket and they have it out for you is a person that's just having a bad day or is a person that's really struggling. And if we can sort of remember the truth of, of that, we can get beyond a lot of our sort of petty frustrations for sure. Yeah. And, and when they're deeper, what I always suggest, recommend to people is that people are mirrors for ourselves. So if something really irritates there are teachers, there are or drives you teachers. crazy about them, then mm -hmm. that means that's a reflection of you, you know, and, and you're actually seeing it healing. Yes, yes, absolutely. If they're a teacher and it's an opportunity for healing and sometimes we can't step into forgiveness right away because, but, but I, you know, sometimes people will begin a process with me and they'll say, I'm not ready to do this work, but it's an intention I have for the future. And I always think fantastic because if you even ha are holding the intention that you want to get to forgiveness, you're not quite ready right now. Right. You're, you're on the path because you see where you want to go. You have your right. whole vision. And I think that that's wonderful. And I also think it's very honest of people to say, I'm not quite there yet. Or I don't, because sometimes people will step into a process and real quickly say, Oh, I forgive this person. But in fact, they haven't, they haven't done the work and they're still really angry and Absolutely. they haven't you know, gone through a process. So it's okay right. to say, you know what? I'm mad as heck at this person. Um, and sometimes I'll have people work with a blame letter or something like that, kind of an, I am mm -hmm. that kind of right. process. And I think that that's a very healing process when you look at a brother and say, I am that, you know, and step mm -hmm. into the truth that, you know, a lot of metaphysical idea, the predominant metaphysical idea in A Course in Miracles is there's only one of us here. Right. Uh, and so if we can say, I am that, we can begin to sort of ease that division or that idea that we're separate from a brother. Um, and it's challenging work, you know, for all of us, right? Because we want to hold on to our petty grievances or our big grievances. But I think it's really um, work worth doing because certainly we bear the brunt of not doing the work if we don't do the work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, the Moses Code talks about that. So it's kind of interesting that you brought up. So they probably got that from A Course in Miracles. I am that I am. And they put a comma, you know. Uh, yes. That it's so important to do that because then what you're doing is reflecting upon another who you yes. are and that they are the same as you there's a there's a meditation you can find it online it's called so hum which is another way of saying i am that but you know it's a so hum and you go into this thing and you listen to it, it's this repetitive meditation mm, again with the intention cool. of connecting with your brother aligning with the divine aligning remembering there's only one of us here some people wow. worry you think well if i'm not carrying this then who's going to police the universe you know if i'm not holding my grudges then you know how will janine nobody needs to go well nobody needs to police the universe it's exhausting <laughs> when we give that up boy we're just liberated it makes us That's lighter crazy. We're younger, we're vibrating higher, we're more attractive. I mean, it really is sort of an ugly uh, bag of I don't know what, you know, <laughs> that we're carrying around when we're in heavy judgment. It's just not an attractive vibration, and it's just not, not the vibration all. we want to create, right? I so agree. it's better to say, oh, you know, Dr. Janine, I'm not real into her, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bless her and send her on her way. It's, it's right. real liberating. It's real liberating. Well, if you live in the now moment and you stop living the past and you stop living your future, you'll find that you don't have much to be judgment, judgmental about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. it's the people that live in their past and live in the future that end up judging all kinds of things in their life and others because they can't be in the present moment. 
Which is that the power of now, right? You know, the, yes, and the power of totally, totally gift. Gift. Yes, the power and what of a gift, gift that is. Present. Because you only have now. You only have right now. That's right. Yeah, right. you do. Yeah. You truly do. Or even if we're thinking about time in sort of um, in scientific terms, right. we can't get our mind around this, but all time is happening now. Yes. There isn't a path. There isn't a future. It's all time is happening now. We can't really understand that as human beings, but, but Correct. science Correct. bears that out. So oh, yeah. in truth, literally, you only have right now. I mean, it's a literal fact. Which yes, is fascinating. You, only, you only have this moment, you know, and so you, if you live in this moment right now, and you don't worry about what's going to happen in two hours or two days or two months, mm -hmm. and you don't worry about what's going to, what has happened to you and all the trauma, because I got to tell you, every single person that comes to this planet is unscathed from pain, sorrow, suffering, and that's why you chose to come here, is to experience that amongst other beautiful things, love and joy and all those other experiences to give you discernment. So yeah. Contrast, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's contrast, if you want to call it that. I call it discernment. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, can, we can begin to chew. I was I gave a, an example the other day. I don't know why I was into eating mushrooms that day. And I, I said, you know what? You don't know if you like talking mushrooms better or portobello until you try them both and say, oh, I'm leaning in this direction. You do, we, we have to learn uh, in that, that way, or that's the way we've set it, set it up. Yes. So, yes. Um, but that's in every awesome. moment, we can choose love. We can choose to see the love. And I can and I can totally um, tell people that in me now living in the present moment, not worrying about the future or the past, all kinds of amazing miracles unfold upon you, because you're not stuck in that what it what the shoulda coulda woulda of the past yeah. and of the future of what if what if this what if that what if the other. It's like that doesn't exist in my reality. So all kinds of great things just manifest automatically for me, and I just see it as as the moment, you know, as the now yes. moment and you live in much more joy and you raise your frequency much higher when you do that. Right. Because you're in appreciation and appreciation is akin to love. And so right. if you're right. just appreciating each moment and you can stay present in each moment, it's a wonderful thing. Usually people sort of default to the past or they default to the present, depending right. on what kind of a person they are, what kind of personality they have. Yeah. But both are a trap. You know, both really are a trap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People say, well, I want, I loved my past. Is it okay for me to think about it? And I think, it's okay for you to think about it, but it's, it's a very slippery slope. Ram Das wrote a book, uh, Still, Still Here, and he was talking about, he had had a stroke, and right, uh, right. he said he was very tempted to, you know, like sort of live in the past with all his accolades and his mementos mm -hmm. and his articles and his awards, and what he did was he burned them, and I thought, holy smokes, I mean, there must have been just trunks of his awards and his accolades, yeah. but he yeah. just... Well, they're, they're not feeding him anything. <laughs> Yeah. So and, and he amazing, was the original um, guy that wrote the book Be Here Now. The, so that's the real good on him to actually and the live his purpose and, in the and actually live. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of coaches out there that. Yeah, and there's a lot of coaches out there that don't, you know, walk their talk. You know, so I take my hat off for him walking his talk and just letting yeah. go. No. Well, everybody's in process, you know, some people, you know, do do it well and some people don't and some people have good months or, you know, whatever, or I wouldn't, I won't even say good or bad, but everybody's in process with it. So everybody's in a different place, but boy, Ram Das really pulled it out of his hat with, for that one. That was really amazing. <laughs> and his friends really were appreciating too. They said, oh, we like you so much better like this. <laughs> it's like, I got a kick out of that. <laughs> I bet they did. So on that note, we're going to have to go to commercial.